Hey, good evening. So I guess all of us know why we are here. We're here to celebrate uh, the life of Michaela Brown. Uh, 25 years, very short time here on earth, um, but a very loving person, as we can see by the crowd, represented a very diverse group of people. It's never easy coming to a visual. It's never easy never knowing what to say in these situations. There's really not much you can say. Um, but the family, and I know a lot of you are family, but we thank you all for, for coming and showing your support for Michaela. Um, and at this time, I'm going to turn it over uh, to someone for a song. Tabby, Tabby Brown. Tabby Brown. I have a quick moment of silence I'm from Michaela. At this time, we'll have prayer by Tracy Blue. Let us pray. Father, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we come before you, Lord, with heavy hearts. God, we come before you now, God, even with racing minds. But in the mighty name of Jesus, God, even in this moment of sorrow, we ask your presence to come forth right now in Jesus' name. God, we ask your presence, Lord God, to meet us here. Father, I lift up every family member. 
I lift up every friend now. God, I lift up everyone that's connected to Michaela. And I ask, Father God, that you give them a peace that will surpass all understanding. Father God, I ask right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, despite of what they're feeling, God, let them feel your love even more abundantly. Despite of what they may be thinking, God, let your joy overtake their mind. In the name of Jesus, God, I even lift up Surveyor now. I thank you for her life. We thank you, Father God, that although this is traumatic, Father God, this situation has changed her life. God, we ask right now that the path be already prepared for her. We thank you, Lord God, that the hand of Jesus and the blood of Jesus covers her now from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. That when she has questions and when she doesn't understand, God, that your love will fill her heart and memories of her mother, God, will fill her heart that will surpass all the need for understanding. We ask right now, God, that every person that even will be a part of her life, God, that you equip them now, God, to be what she needs them to be. Father God, that whatever doors that she may need be already open. Father God, that every way be already paved. Father God, that every crooked path be made straight now in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up Surveyor now and we cancel every plot, plan, and agenda of the enemy. We cancel right now, God, any diabolical agenda of the enemy. We thank you, Lord. Lord God, that you've already prepared a place for her. God, we lift up Vicki now. We lift up her father now. God, we lift up all of their family members now, God. God, we know that their hearts are heavy and that they're filled with burden and grief, God. But Lord, we need you to be a peace, God, that will surpass all understanding. So Father, as we go forth with the vigil on today, as we go forth, God, let your presence be made known here. If healing needs to go forth, let it go forth here. If deliverance needs to go forth, let it go forth here. If forgiveness needs to go forth, let it go forth here. God, just because they came, God, let them leave another way. Let them leave with their needs met. Let them leave, God, with their minds stayed on you. So, Father, we love you, God, and we thank you, God. And, God, most importantly, we trust you. We trust you now. So, God, we make that declaration now that we trust you in all of your ways. So, God, let our minds match your will. Let our heart match your will. And let our ways match your will. Be a lamp unto our feet and be a light unto our path. These things we ask in your son Jesus' name. And we count it done. And we call it done. And we believe it to be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have reflections uh, in this order. Uh, Chantel Madden, Chanel Sherman, and then Tawana Irby. So Chantel, you can come now. Or if she's not here, we'll go to... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. There's so much I could say about Michaela Brown. This has been my best friend for 13 years. I want to say I'm sorry to her family, to her other friends, to her child. You know, she didn't deserve this. She was truly a great person. She did things the right way. She didn't deserve this. <laughs> Kayla, I love you. I love you so, so much, baby, and I'm sorry. All I can say is I'm sorry. I've known Michaela my whole life, and um, the best memories that I have is just us growing up. Our family was close, so we did a lot of things together, whether it was spending the night at somebody's house or 
trying to go somewhere. Longest. One of our mamas picked this up. Somebody, the other mama had to pick this up. Um, I hate that, you know, we have to celebrate her like this. But I think at this point, the best thing that we can do now is bring awareness to it. African Americans play a big part in the statistics as far as the race. Our race make up a big part of domestic violence and 19% involves a deadly weapon. And it shouldn't be like that. If you ever in a situation that's toxic, you gotta get out. There's so much more to life than negative energy, toxic relationships. And I know that the music that we listen to today idolizes it. But that's not the way. I love you, Michaela. And we're going to always advocate for you. All of us ladies was able to meet Michaela when we all went to Virginia College together. When we all met Michaela, I'm sure we all can say was, she is the sweetest person that you can ever meet. She was like a sister. She was our baby sister. We all took care of her. We went to school. We clowned. We had so much fun. So many good memories. I'm, I'm so sorry that this happened to her because she did not deserve this. Michaela was the sweetest person that you could ever meet. She would take me, see, girl, let me ask you a question. And I thought, what is it, Mika? What is it, Michaela? We would talk all the time, like, we work together, so it's like every morning, how many patients you got? How many patients do you got? How's your day going so far? I'm going to miss that. It's the little things that you don't have anymore that you're going to miss. Even though Michaela is not my blood, I feel like she is a part of me. When I got the news that this happened, it devastated me. It rocked me to the core because she was such a young, gentle person. She did not deserve this. It took me a minute to go back to work because I just knew that I was going to look at those messages and see me and Michaela have been talking two and three and four and five times a day. And now I can't do that anymore. But I promise you, just like the other young lady said, I will definitely make sure that we are advocates for you, Michaela. We will definitely make sure we bring awareness because this should not happen to anybody. If it's a toxic relationship, you have to get out. You have to speak up. Because if not, you don't, we don't need another Michaela. She was too sweet for this. We love you so much, Michaela. We will always love you. Chanel mentioned that uh, South Carolina is, is high in death rates for uh, intimate partner violence. But South Carolina, for the past five years, is ranked number five in the nation for domestic violence deaths. And so I know in this crowd, and I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I'm gonna say it because I feel like I need to say it. There's a lot of people in this crowd right now who are in toxic relationships. And some of the people here are the aggressors. Look at this beautiful face. Look at this family who's hurting and the friends that are hurting. If you are in a toxic relationship, whether you're the aggressor or the victim, you've got to get out. You've got to leave. I don't care if they're paying the bills, I don't care if they're providing for you, I don't care if they put gas in your car, you've got to get out. And if you need help, see me. I can help you get out of it. We don't want another Michaela Brown. Because even though there's a Michaela, there's 2,000 other women last year in South Carolina who were victims of domestic violence. 
We've got to stop this pattern, this trend. This time we're going to have a song from Denisha Dawson. Mm -hmm. Should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven? Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he, his eye is on for that selection. And at this time, we will have reflections by Teresa and Vera Brown. Teresa and Vera. Okay. And as they come, after Teresa and Vera speak, then we'll hear again from Derek Quarles. Michaela was our great niece. When Michaela was little, we begged Michael and Vicky to give Michaela to us. And Vicky said no. But I never forget when Michaela used to come up to our house and my daughter, they said her and my daughter favor a lot. My daughter, I used to get her, I said, you wash Michaela's hair. And I never forget this. Michaela come running down the my mama's yard, and I said, what's going on? She said, she tried to kill me. <laughs> I said, girl, come on here, let me finish your hair. And we used, we gave Michaela the name the Fighting Hyena because all the boys that came up with her, now she used to lay it on them. They could not do nothing with Michaela. And she had one of the prettiest smiles that we will never forget. She was so loved. And now my son, uh, Lopez, he gonna say something. He can't do it. Uh, we all love McKenna so much that this really hurt us. But in the process of all of this, God makes no mistakes. I know we all are hurting, but we got to forgive too. So 
it's all in God's hands. So I'm asking every, each and every one of y'all to give it to God and let God handle it. And it'll be all right. Next, we'll have um, Derek Pauls, who's representing District 25. Um, I'm sure that most of us are familiar with him, but um, he's a great resource for this community. So we want to take in whatever he has to say as well. And I'll be very brief. I, I've already said what I wanted to say, but I wanted to reiterate it. Because I feel like when you look at the, this data on the number of domestic violence cases in South Carolina, and then you look at the, the color of the people, they look like me as black people. And so we got to have honest conversations and intentional conversations about domestic violence and what it means to our community and how it affects our community. And so if you know your brother or your sister or your cousin that's in a relationship or a friend, again, come and see me so that I can help them. If it's you, come and see me so that I can help you. Because again, we got to stop coming to vigils saying rest in peace, rest in heaven, rest easy to our loved ones especially at the age of 25, especially who has a child who's going to look to it for her mom in the coming weeks, in the coming months, in the coming years, and her mom won't be there. All for what? For nothing. And so I just want to stress it. Please, 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 if you are in a toxic relationship, it's the same thing as domestic violence. We call it toxic, but it's domestic violence. You've got to get out of it. It may look cute on social media because we glorify, our generation glorifies violence for whatever reason. We glorify, you know, calling women out of their names. We glorify all of the things that we should not be glorifying, and it leads to this. We've got to stop. Next we have Mr. Trayvon Morton, and we're asking that he comes and gives comments as well. Okay, so he he don't want to he don't want to speak, but I will say, um, can we lift him up in prayer at this moment? Father, we thank you for Trayvon. We thank you for his life. God, we thank you for his assignment to his daughter. And God, although it is great, God, we rally around him now. God, we rally around his mind. And Father, we commit that we won't just say it with words, but we'll put actions to our words, God. And we won't just leave our words here at this visual, God, but, and we won't leave them even at the funeral, but we will continue to rally around him and Savannah, that we'll continue to be a community, that we'll continue to be a village for him and his daughter. In Jesus' name, amen. Next we have Tina Brown. Tina Brown. I'm here because Kayla's not here and she can't speak. But some of us can step into action. Some of us have to pick up the torch to remember her, to make sure that nobody else ends up in a situation like this. Domestic violence doesn't just start with a punch in the face immediately. It starts with, I love you. It starts with dinner. It starts with phone calls. It starts with letting your guard down. It starts with them getting into your heart, where it changes the ability to think clearly because you're blinded by what your mind is telling you and what your heart streams think. And you think it's gonna get better. It's gonna change. One day it's gonna be different and it starts to go through a cycle of abuse, which is a honeymoon phase, where they love on you, buy you things, tell you they're sorry, tell you they're never gonna do it again. And before you know it, you're back in that same cycle. And domestic violence doesn't just affect older people, it affects younger people, it affects the people across the board. It, it affects everybody. I'm sure everybody in this room can think of somebody that's either been the, the witness, the victim, or know somebody. One of the things I loved about Kayla so much was that she had the biggest heart, and she loved everybody. And she had the most infectious smile, and I loved to hear her giggle, and I loved to hear her just laugh. And somebody has to remember her. We have to make a mark to remember her. We have to 
to, to reach out so nobody else's family is here like we are today. But this is what I would say to everybody who's here. Everybody's here because you loved her, period. You're here because you loved her. But you never know somebody standing next to you might be a victim now. And no matter how many times you talk to them and you may say to get out, if you're in that cycle of abuse, your mind does not know how to get out. Because maybe your money is locked up. Maybe your escape route is messed up. Maybe they've already threatened your mother. Maybe they've already threatened your baby. Maybe they've already taken all your power and beat you down into submission. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens over you. It happens as a process. And so I, along with everybody else out here, will never forget her. Look at the impact that she had and look at all the lives she touched. So let's do the best we can to help somebody else. No matter how many times you tell them don't go back, if they go back, don't give up on them. Maybe that next time they'll get out. Maybe that next time they'll have strength. Maybe that next time you can already have a go bag ready to go. Maybe the next time you can have money to put up. Maybe the next time you can tell their family members, she's safe, but I can't tell you where she is. Maybe we'll have the courage to stand and fight for those who lost the courage to stand or who had it beat out of them over time. Don't throw them away. Don't give up on them. Whatever we can do to help as a community, whatever we can do, I would love to create a Michaela Brown Foundation for other young women who are in that same situation and, and maybe their heart is just so big they don't know how. But if we give them some tools to protect themselves, to defend themselves, to pay attention to their surroundings, to say, I need help, maybe we can save another life. Mm -hmm. We thank Ms. Brown for her, for her words of encouragement and instruction. Is there anyone else that would like to share thoughts or your heart? Reflections, it's open for reflections now from anyone else. Taylor was 20. I'm probably 27 this year. Taylor was with my best friend, y'all. She never switched up on me. She was just at my house Tuesday. I talked to her Friday. And I didn't hear from her again. I knew. But I thought I was to get really stayed out of it. I mind my business. But I've been beating myself up every day because I feel like it's more I could have done. I've been in that position, let somebody pop me any kind of way, treat me any kind of way. We're just better out there. Like, I just, God. I ain't even got too much to say. I just know that was my girl. Didn't know it was the love of, I love her family. Like I said, that's my little sister. I never forget it. We thank you for those comments. Does anybody else have anything they would like to say? Anybody else? Okay. Well, I'll just say this. I don't know Michaela personally. But I will tell you, her story broke my heart. And her spirit has been pressed upon mine. And I reached out to Johnny, and this is part of the reason how I ended up here. But I reached out to Johnny to not only share my condolences, but to share how her story has just impacted my life. I have not been able to sleep thinking about this baby. And it is evident that she's an awesome person, that she was a loving person, and that you guys loved her tremendously. And I said that to make this plea, let's not let her life be in vain. Amen. Let's not let her life be in vain. 
I know you guys have heard it over and over, but if it's you, find someone here to talk to. If it's you, find someone here to confide in. Find someone here to, to pray with you, to pray you through, to, to, con to confide in, to help you, to give you instruction and wisdom and guidance. Don't let our life be in vain. Okay? At this time, we're going to have our closing prayer. Okay, so at this time, we have the closing prayer by Pastors Adrian and Nicole Bowens, and after which, we'll do the balloon release. First, we want to send our condolences to the families of Michaela, to the friends of Michaela. As pastors and leaders, we're very familiar with domestic violence. We are familiar with how victims withhold this information out of numerous reasons, out of fear, out of embarrassment. There are a lot of reasons behind why they don't talk about it. There's a lot of reasons why um, they, they don't get out of it. It's not always as easy and simple as many of us may think because one thing about domestic violence, what happens is they end up in a place where it's like they're literally brainwashed. And in that situation, it's very difficult for them to get out. So just like everybody has stated, and I want to reiterate that, if that is you, if you're the aggressor, if you're the victim, God is available for either one of you. God is available. And in this, I know this is difficult for the family, and I heard somebody mention forgiveness. Forgiveness is necessary even for the one that committed this crime. God is available to all of us. He is not a respect to a person. And in this, I just, there's a lot of young people out there, and God is just drawing me to that. And I really want to pray and target that of all the young people that are out here. And if everyone could just bow their heads. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before you, God, right now, God. We lift up this family to you, God, right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. And God, in the name of Jesus, God, I ask, Father God, that you touch, God, every person, God, that is out here right now, God. Touch their hearts, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Touch their minds, God, right now in the name of Jesus. And I even pray, God, right now for the family, the, the mother, the father, the daughter of this baby, God, in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of depression right now in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of anger right now in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of hate right now in the name of Jesus. And we release the power of love to them right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And even as we're out here, God, right now, God, I come against premature death in these young people, God, in the name of Jesus. I bind at the hand of the enemy right now. They will target their life. We uproot and dismantle every trick of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. That's against them right now in the name of Jesus. I speak and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that they shall live. They shall live, God, in the name of Jesus. They shall live, God, in the name of Jesus. They shall complete every assignment that you have given them, God. And God, we give you glory, God. And we give you honor, God. On today, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to say before we even close out. Thank you, Lord. Much respect to every friend, every family member, every loved one that's represented here on this evening. Brother Johnny, Brother Derek, Sister Tracy. It is our prayer. We pray God's blessings upon all of us. Even as we look at life, we have to stop thinking that we have lifetime is right. eternity and forever. Right. It's not. See the example here before us today. It's not. 
But with all of that being said, I want us to understand change must take place. Change must take place, not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. Change has to take place now. Change don't start by me looking at my brother or my sister. Change begins by me looking at me. What am I doing? What kind of legacy am I leaving behind? What kind of life am I leading for that young woman or that young man to come and follow me? Brothers and sisters, change begins with us. Change begins when we accept Jesus as our Savior. And I just want to offer this invitation. If there's anyone out here right now, don't be ashamed. Don't worry about who's looking at you. But if you don't know Jesus as, as your Father, as your covering, you can accept him now. Yes. Doesn't matter what you got on, what you look like. All that stuff doesn't matter. That's right. That's right. What matters is your heart. Yeah. What matters is your heart. Yeah. And you can't look at me. You can't look at your neighbor. You got to look at yourself. That's right. And be honest with you. Yeah. And say, hey, where am I? Where will I be tomorrow? Where will I be this time next week? Not in the natural, not in the physical, but in your heart. So I offer this opportunity. You can come up here. Myself, my wife, Johnny, Tracy can lead you and walk you through the plan of salvation. Don't take, don't take long. Like 30 seconds and you're there. And this opportunity that we're extending, it doesn't end when we put the mic down. It continues. So if you need to grab one of these people after we're walking away, as we're walking away, do that. Do that. The bottom line is we have to get it together. We have to do it now while God is still available for us. Amen? Amen? I want to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we honor you. We respect you. We love you. We thank you so much, God, for life. We pray, God, that our brothers and our sisters will not take life for granted. God, give us the strength as we mourn and we grieve the loss of a loved one. We don't negate that. But, Father, when all is said and done, we ask God that we can look ourselves in the mirror and accept change. It's my prayer now that you will bless every individual that's under the sound of my voice. Cover them. Keep them. Give them strength. Teach them, oh God, to let them know that it's not them that who keeps them, but it's only you who keeps all of us. So we thank you now. We praise you. We honor you. Even under these circumstances, we still give you glory. Now, God, be with the family. Be with these loved ones. Touch them, God, in a major way. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. We say amen. Amen. At this time, we are going to have the balloon release. And so... In about 10 seconds, so you got to get ready. In about 10 seconds, we'll release those balloons. Can y'all kind of come, come this way a little bit? Because the trees are catching the balloon.
Miller on the count of three. One. <laughs> and I just want to share right quickly without sharing any names, the impact that Michaela's already making on people. Somebody watching this live just wrote me on Facebook and said, Derek, my name is, my daughter Black was threatened on Sunday. I've been hunting her all week. She's going to court tomorrow for order protection. And so she's sending her address and number, so I'm going there when I leave here because, so Michaela's life is already making an impact. And so we just thank God for that. And so we know that there are more people that are in these situations that need to get out. So please contact us. Tracy Fan is here. She's an activist in the community. She does a lot of great work. Contact her. She has a lot of resources as well. Tracy, you want to say something? I appreciate it, Derek. I was telling Derek I hadn't been feeling well. I just came out to support. But like he said, if anyone needs any help with any type of resources or anything, contact me, and I will steer you in the right direction. Um, I appreciate that, though. So before we dismiss, does anybody want to come up and say anything before we leave? Anybody else? And we'll wait a minute. We'll wait. <laughs> <laughs>